Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've made a couple of videos relating to receiving a DATV repeater GB3TV in the past, which is around 15 miles away, and its output is on the 23 centimeter band at 1.3 gigahertz. Now in this video, we've had great success in receiving on 23 centimeters and then transmitting on 70 centimeters, hence the two Yagis that you can see here up on the mast. Now to get to this stage, I ordered a 44 element 23 sem Yagi from Wemo. In fact, they have a few different options. One is a 28 element, the other is a 67 element. And the one that I settled on here is the 44 element and it's only around three meters long. Now it arrived here in the UK from Germany all in one piece. And as you can see here, it's fairly well packed with all that packaging to keep it protected during transit. So I was quite happy. I received it without any bent parts, etc. Now this antenna does come in a few parts, and as I've never put a Yagi like this together before, I think it would be wise to take a quick look at the manual. And once I've got all the parts into my utility room with my makeshift workbench here, I wanted to make sure all the parts were there so I could start building it. Now this Yagi has a kind of rear reflector that actually mounts vertically. Now I'll be using this antenna horizontally, but still this rear reflector, it does mount vertically at the end. Now the package included all the parts to mount to a pole. And just to note, this antenna will only connect to the top of a pole or mast. It cannot be located in the center like we see on some other Yagi antennas. Now that's mainly down to the fact that this is three meters long and it does need some center supports, which you'll see in a moment. Now after following the instructions, which are actually quite clear, I managed to get it all assembled, ready to fit on top of my temporary mast. So I carried it outside to give it a once over to make sure all of those bolts and nuts that keep this thing together were as tight as they could be. You can see here in the center of the supporting arms, this is where the mast bracket is located. It kind of just sits on top of your mast. Now I did not record putting this actually up in the air, but I did install the antenna like this for the first time, just to check that it was working and receiving where I wanted it to receive. Now I know it's not exactly good to have the coax dangling like that, but it was just an initial test to make sure I could receive the output of GB3 TV at 1.3 gigahertz. Now you will notice here that I used my old TV rotator just so I could get the antenna aligned correctly. Now the coax that was used, if you're wondering, was five meters of LMR 400, and I connected this directly to the receive port or my Pluto SDR, which is normally used for my QA100 station. Now this meant I could use my computer indoors as this Pluto SDR is connected over the network. So back indoors, and I'm going to use an SDR application called SDR Angel. If you've not used this application before and you have some SDRs knocking around, you really want to try this software. It's full of all types of decoders. Now initially I connect to the Pluto SDR using SDR Angel over the network and then I tune it to 1.318 gigahertz. Now this is where I should see a signal from GB3 TV. Now the only other time I've received this was using a vertical antenna on my roof, but GB3 TV output uses horizontal polarization, so it was never that strong. However, with this 44 elements of this Wimo 23 centimeter Yagi, I finally managed to receive GB3 TV, very strong. Now with the DATV decoder module loaded and the correct video settings such as FEC type, bit rate, sample rate, etc., I was actually able to receive and decode GB3 TV very well indeed. Now the DATV module within SDR Angel is okay, but to view the video feed, I actually used VNC. Now all you have to do is enable the UDP port option on the SDR Angel DATV module, but that's just the click of a button. So now that we can receive video output, now with the UDP enabled, we can now connect to the local computer on the UDP port defined here using VLC. So the next step was to install this 23 centimeter 44 element Yagi onto another mast where I'm also using the Yesu rotator that I showed you in a recent video. Now for this, I will also install the 70 centimeter Yagi antenna, which I'll be using for transmitting the DATV signal to GB3 TV. Now this 70 centimeter Yagi is a diamond A430S15R, which is a 15 element Yagi. 
it only has around 14 dBi of gain and can only handle around 50 watts. However, I purchased this antenna from Moonmaker here in the UK with just one purpose, and that was to transmit my DATV signal to GB3 TV at precisely 437 megahertz. Now, as GB3 TV is only 15 miles away, it should be okay for that. Now, for the transmit side, I will use an Ant SDR E200, which is running Pluto SDR firmware, so any Pluto SDR would work. However, I do need to bump up the power a little, and if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you would have seen me review this little UHF amplifier a few weeks ago. And back then, it was literally no good for DATV because it required a higher input to activate transmit. Now, I have made some modifications to this amplifier so that it works directly with a Pluto SDR. You can clearly see here I've added a cooling fan to the top of that heatsink, and I've changed out the two LEDs on the front to some more substantial LEDs. Okay, so let's take a look inside to see what I've changed. So firstly, I removed the original PCB that was inside here, and if you remember, it had all that white gunk all over the place. Not that that was a problem, but the original PCB had relays and RF sensing to put it into transmit, something that Pluto could not do on its own. So I removed that PCB and I kept the RF module as this should still be usable. Now, I then ordered another PCB from Enigma Components here in the UK, which is designed to be used with that specific RF module. Now, this actually has a PTT control, which I've wired to one of the switches on the front panel. Now, if you saw my last video on my homemade transceiver, then you will notice the board looks very similar, but this board is a lot larger as it supports a larger RF module. Now there was also a 6 dB attenuator on the board, which I removed by removing six resistors and then just bridging those for a direct connection from the antenna input port to the input pin of that RF module. Now with a 50 milliwatt drive, this amplifier should produce 30 watts of RF power. However, as we're using DATV and not FM or CW, the power output will be greatly reduced due to the bandwidth of the DATV signal and how much power it takes to amplify such a wide signal. We're probably looking at less than 10 watts before the amplifier gets saturated and the DATV signal quality suffers. Now the transmit side will consist of this modified amplifier and a homemade low pass filter, which should filter out anything nasty going into the amplifier. Now strictly speaking, I should have a low pass filter on the output as well, but I'm unsure on the power rating of this homemade filter so for this test, I will not use one. Now you may be thinking that it could cause an issue. Well, it does, especially for me, and later in the video, you'll find out why and what I plan to do to fix this. Now the output of the Ant SDR will connect directly to the input of the low pass filter. So here we have the transmit side installed in my conservatory with the Ant SDR connected to my home network via ethernet. So the Ant SDR is just powered from a 5 volt Raspberry Pi power supply and the amplifier is powered from a regular 13.8 volt CB radio power supply. The output of the amplifier is then connected to around 10 meters of Formula Zero coax, which is actually pretty low loss. And then this connects to the diamond 70 centimeter Yagi. Now I could have used a shorter length of coax, but uh, I, I just didn't really want to cut the coax. So I left it at 10 meters. The 23 centimeter Wemo Yagi is still connected to the input of my Pluto SDR, which I normally use for QA100. Now with everything connected up, the antenna is roughly pointing in the same direction towards GB3 TV. It is now time to head into the shack to see if all this works. Now I will be using a few different pieces of software for this test, and not all of them are strictly needed, but let me explain which each of these are used for. So firstly, we have SDR Angel, which we saw a few moments ago, primarily for receiving the 1.3 gigahertz output from GB3 TV, and then demodulating this to a viewable video stream. Now, as my QO100 gear will be powered up while I'm testing, I will be using the Winter Hill DAT receiver, which is also in the conservatory, to act as a local monitor, basically monitoring my transmission. I also have the internet stream of GB3 TV playing in a browser, along with SDR Connect, which is an SDR replication 
running underneath it. And this is so that I can visually see the DATV transmission that I'm about to make on 437 megahertz. Now over to the right, we have the rotator controller page and OBS, which is the software used to capture audio and video. Now the software, which collects the audio and video from OBS, encodes it into a video stream and then controls the ANSDR is this application called DATV Easy. Now this is a free download online. Now you have to set the DVB mode, symbol rate, FEC, and of course the transmitting frequency. There's also a little power slider which controls the power output from the Pluto while it's transmitting. Now you may see me adjust this so that we can get a cleaner output. Now as soon as I start transmitting, we can see the DATV carrier appear on the SDR Connect software. And to the left of that, we can see the Winter Hill software start to decode the transmitted video. Now watch what happens to the receive. It gets completely lost. And I think I know why, but more on that in a moment. Now as the internet stream from GB3 TV is delayed, we finally do get my transmitted signal confirmed to be received by GB3 TV on its 437 megahertz input. Adjusting power levels and FEC values will affect the quality of the received transmission. Now I would say this amplifier is kind of on the borderline of working, but by dropping the FEC to one stroke two, it did hold its own for a while with minimal dropouts. Now I could actually raise the antenna higher, which would probably make it work even better. Now you would have thought that transmitting on 437 megahertz would be far enough away from 1.3 gigahertz frequency that we're receiving on not to have an effect. Now my theory here is, and hopefully someone might be able to confirm this, is that because I'm not using a low pass filter on the output of the amplifier, some harmonics are killing the front end of the Pluto that's being used to receive. Now it could also be said that I should use a band pass filter on the input of the Pluto SDR for 23 centimeters which is probably the most likely cause as the Pluto SDR is actually kind of wide open, allowing everything in on the receive port at the same time. So having something like a bandpass filter should in theory block out anything else apart from what we're interested in, receiving a signal on 1.3 gigahertz. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you've got any questions or comments or suggestions, then please leave them down below. I'll be very interested to read them and I'm sure a lot of others will do too. Now I do have a 70 centimeter high powered low pass filter design that I'm going to be building extremely soon. I just need to get one little bit of equipment up and working so that I can produce it. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.